Okay, so part four of food addiction, food eating disorders, and body image issues. Um, so July of 2019, this is after I have fasted and gotten some freedom and realized that food had become my refuge and my reward. Um, God had undone things in me. I was really, I was pretty far healed at this point. I was eating healthily. I was no longer binging at night. I was no longer, I would still have bouts or periods where I would turn to food, you know, once a month or once in six weeks. And I would feel bad about it, but I, it wasn't, it wasn't every day and it wasn't consuming my life. So I still didn't like my body though. I had given God control. I was really enjoying, you know, surrendering food and, and all of that to him. Um, oh, I guess actually before we go there, we'll go somewhere else. January, um, when I was doing the 40 day sugar fast, I was for the first time during that fast, I experienced what it was like to enjoy my food with Jesus. There was a particular meal. I was fasting and I wasn't sure what I wanted to eat. And God was like, why don't you ask me what, what you want to eat? And I said, okay, what, what do I eat? Because I wanted lunch. It was kind of like time for lunch, but I hadn't had breakfast yet. And I wasn't sure if I wanted lunch or if I wanted breakfast. And I couldn't decide. And I went back and forth. And uh, God, God was like, ask me. And I was like, okay, Lord, what... What do I eat? What does my body need? What's gonna satisfy my taste buds? What do I eat? And he told me oatmeal, and I, I love oatmeal. Oatmeal's great. So I decided on breakfast, I had oatmeal, and as I ate, it actually was a spiritual experience. I so enjoyed my oatmeal. It was like the best oatmeal I had ever tasted, and my cup of decaf coffee. It was so good, and I was communing with God. It was like, obedience to obedience tastes sweet obedience tastes so sweet and god wants to satisfy our taste buds he wants us to enjoy food he created it with color and texture and taste and smell i mean food satisfies a lot of our senses and when you're cooking it sound it satisfies all the senses um so i i god made food good and i experienced what it's like to enjoy food with God. He really does want to satisfy your desires and your taste buds. I mean, God created your taste buds. God knows what tastes good and what tastes bad. Eating healthy isn't supposed to be this, um, like going against your body. It's supposed to work with your body. It's supposed to fuel your body. It's supposed to be good for your body. It's supposed to be enjoyable. God made food enjoyable. So, I, um, so I had this experience with God, this spiritual experience of eating with him and what that was like and what it was like to give God control and to really enjoy my life and that God has good things. And there's been many times now where I'm able to eat something and fully enjoy it before I couldn't enjoy food that had too many calories, too much fat, too much, whatever I didn't. And then it wouldn't, I couldn't enjoy my food. And so that was the first time that I said, okay, God, what do I eat? What, what, you know what my body needs. What, do, what does my body want? What does my body need? And he answered that prayer and it was so good and it was so satisfying. And that kind of intimacy with Jesus is possible. He wants to be in part of your daily life. He wants to be involved in the details. He enjoys, he created you. He wants you to engage in relationship with him like that, to depend on him like that in areas that you struggle with. I don't ask God every single meal what my body needs. Um, but I, I mean, there are times where I still say, God, I don't know what to eat. What do I eat? And he'll lead me and guide me. And I'm usually very satisfied with it and very content with it. Um, so July of 2019, after the fast, I'm doing better now, but I still don't totally love my body. I don't hate it anymore. I, 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 and I'm, I'm not, um, obsessed with being thin anymore, but I'm not, I still critique my body. And so I was doing a, um, I was looking at, I was writing a newsletter and I was looking at old photos from a couple months or a month back. And I looked at those photos 
and I realized I didn't hate my body. I was like, wow, I look good there. And these photos were exactly the same photos that I had disliked myself in before. I had seen those photos of myself and I did not like myself. I found nitpicked parts of my body that I didn't like. And I saw these photos and I, I liked myself in them. I looked, I was like, wow, I look good. I look okay. Um, and so the point of that, sharing that, is that God had changed my view of myself, my perspective of myself. God had shown me what true beauty was. I had been praying, God, please show me, um, I don't want my definition of beauty to be uh, what dictates my my perspective. I want your definition of beauty because God, his definition of beauty is, is the most beautiful. Um, his, his definition of beauty is on the inside. There was actually a time when I was doing my seven day water fast, there was this woman who um, was sharing at church and I had just prayed that morning, God, redefine beauty for me. Show me what your definition of beauty is. I don't wanna be stuck in my own. And this woman was, was sharing at church. She doesn't normally share at the church I was going to and she was overweight. Um, she was an overweight woman and she shared a, a poem. And this poem really touched my heart and I, I pricked a tear to my eye. And God told me, she is beautiful. That's my definition of beauty, a heart that is pure before me and in love with me. And um, I started crying. I, God changed something in me because God doesn't see what people see. Man looks at the outside, but the Lord looks at the heart. And that I ended up being able to share that with this woman that God told me she's beautiful to her, to him. Um, and she has true beauty because true beauty is on the inside, not the outside. And God has done so many wonderful things in my life and in my heart and in my mind, redefining beauty for me. So if body image is something you struggle with, ask God to redefine beauty for you. Another time, um, I was really struggling with letting go of being thin and disliking my body. And my boyfriend said, what if you're warped? And deceived what if you what you think is beautiful everyone looks at and sees as frail and sickly and I thought oh okay maybe my definition of beauty isn't <laughs> isn't accurate maybe what I think is beautiful is actually a deception and not beautiful and so I asked God to change my heart and open my eyes to see true beauty so uh, God did and I was able to look at those photos of myself last summer and and the same photos that I had nitpicked at that time when they were taken, I wasn't nitpicking. I was like, wow, wow, God, I'm not, there's nothing there that I dislike. There's nothing that I don't, that, I'm satisfied. I'm, you made a beautiful human being and there's nothing there that I dislike. Um, intimacy is something that Jesus wants with you as you go on your journey of surrendering control of your body and your diet to Jesus he wants intimacy with you um, I did, wanted immediate deliverance and Jesus wanted dependence um, something that I thought I didn't have at this time was self-control I thought I can't control this and I mean I really couldn't because I hadn't given control to God, but something God showed me was, Tessia, you do have self-control. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit and I have given it to you. You have self-control in plenty of other areas of your life. You're just not exercising it in this area. You have self-control, exercise it, use it. Use your muscles of self-control over food. I didn't like it. Um, I had to practice it, but it feels really good now being able to have self-control with food, to be able to not be mastered by food, to not be mastered by my body and how I look and not be forced to go exercise because I feel overweight and not be um, just scarfing down hundreds of calories, sometimes thousands, because I can't control myself. It feels really good to have self-control. So that's something that God did in me. He said, Tessia, you have self-control. Um, there is something else I learned is today's surrender is tomorrow's freedom. You want freedom and victory over this area in your life? Surrender to God today. Surrender control today. 
let him have his way in your body, in your identity, in your image today, and you'll have freedom tomorrow. Today's surrender is tomorrow's freedom. You, you have to surrender control. There is no price on peace, and I can tell you I was not at peace before, and there's so much peace. Now, my mind space is so freed up for the things of God. Before, I was obsessed with this, and my mind space now has space. My mind has space for the things of God that it's supposed to think about rather than being obsessed with my body and my body image and whether or not, I mean, I have whatever, pick, nitpicking my body apart. So um, I have peace of mind now. Something else, repentance. I, I wanted immediate deliverance. And the thing is, I consistently fell back into food for, at the very beginning, I was like, why can't I be free? I'm, I'm falling left and right. I'm turning to food still left and right. And I don't want to turn to food anymore. And something God told me and I did, and I should, you should always do is, um, repent quickly. As soon as you're willing to repent, God is ready. He's ready and he is waiting to forgive you. He is waiting to receive you. He is waiting to accept you. And it doesn't ha matter how many times you have sinned in this area before. Um, continue to repent. Continue to turn back to him. It's not going to help you to stay away from God and to say, okay, well, I, I repented, but obviously I didn't mean it because I'm doing it again. It won't do you any good to stay away from God. As soon as you can, repent and turn to him and ask him for his help and depend on him and rely on him and surrender control again and tell him you want victory in this area and tell him you want to be with him and you're sorry and, and you'll surrender. Stay committed to Jesus. Turn back to Jesus. Continually turn back to Jesus. Don't ever stop turning back to Jesus. When you stop turning back to Jesus, you're, you're basically saying, okay, devil, come take control of me. I'm... I'm not depending on God. Continuously repent, keep turning back, and keep believing that God is going to free you and deliver you if you do it his way, if you trust him, if you surrender to him. Continuously surrender to him and have hope that he will deliver you because he is the almighty God and he is able to deliver you. If he is able to split the Red Sea and to put water in, in valleys and deserts where there is no water, if he's able to manipulate the natural forces that be in our world and provide manna from heaven, he is able to help you conquer your food addiction and your eating disorder. Uh, it's not too hard for God. So surrender control to him and continue continuously repent and surrender and ask for his forgiveness and his grace. Um, be patient in his timing, trust in his timing, trust that he wants to build a solid foundation. He wants to build something in you. He's not looking just to deliver you. He's looking, he's not just giving you fish. He wants to teach you how to fish so that you can get your own fish. He doesn't want to just deliver you and then you fall right back into the same habit patterns. He wants to change something in your heart, change your nature, change your mind. He wants to renew you and transform you. So sometimes that takes time and we have to be patient with God's timing and wait on him and trust him and follow him every step of the way um, that he has for for us. Um, his timing is perfect and fully trustworthy. Hope against hope that freedom is on its way and deliverance will happen. That is true. Something else while you're um, going through this is perspective. Your perspective leads to your attitude, which affects your emotions, which affects your experience. If your perspective of your body, if your perspective of food is wrong, it's going to, it's going to affect your attitude and it's going to affect your, your emotions. And then your emotions are going to be all messed up and then your experience of life will be negative. So, if you're, so you're going to the gym anyway, you can loathe it or love it. That's something that God told me. You're, you're going to the gym anyways. If you, surrender to the experience like tessia we're going to deal with this in your life anyway surrender to the experience and and just say okay god i i'm i'm going to work out and i can either loathe it and my experience will be miserable or i can love it my perspective is great i'm going to get stronger i'm going to get free i'm going to be transformed and then my my attitude changes and then my emotions change i feel joy i feel peace i feel happy and my experience changes and i can fight and i can overcome um you are not a failure. That's something else I want to share. You are not a failure if you fail at this 
area. You're not a failure. God will sustain you and set you free and, and grant you success over this, this area of your life if you trust in him. Something that I had to realize was that my compulsive eating wasn't just me. I believe it was demonic. And when I realized that there was something there, a voice that wasn't of God tempting me, telling me to eat, trying to get me to turn to food, and I didn't give into it, I fought it. Not just fought myself, but fought the devil. I could overcome more easily because I wasn't constantly condemning myself, saying, why am I such a bad person? I can't believe I did this. I realized there's an enemy of my soul trying to tempt me and draw me away from God and get me to... Um, to stumble and fall and not trust God. And when I realized that I didn't have to condemn myself every time I messed up, I, I received God's grace. I stopped, I stopped condemning myself and I received God's grace. So this is all the information I have to share. I know it was a lot. Um, I pray that it blesses you. I really pray that you can be set free from anorexia or bulimia or just an unhealthy relationship with food. Maybe it's constant dieting. Maybe it's um, just dissatisfaction with, with your body and you want peace with that. Um, God, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God loves you. He gave you a body. He wants you to work with your body, not against your body. He wants your body to help you, not hurt you and harm you. You're, he wants your body and your mind and your heart to be in harmony. He created your body and your mind and your heart to engage with each other in harmony, not disunity. But the devil tries to come in and make everything fight against itself so that you end up self-destructing. I mean, when if he can get you to self-destruct, he doesn't have to do anything. So trust God, surrender to God, have hope in him that he will deliver you, he will set you free. Pray before you eat. Pray that God will help you eat for his glory. It really is a small thing, but it, it stops me from overeating. I'll hear the Holy Spirit say, you don't need another bite, you're, you're done. And I'll say, oh, I'm satisfied, okay. This is for your glory, God. This is for you. This isn't for me. Um, pray, pray, pray and depend on God. You will get free. Continuously pray. Surrender control of every area. Um, and God will set you free. He will deliver you. It's just the truth. So I pray this blesses you. I pray that you gain victory and freedom over body image and your identity. I pray that God redefines what beauty really is to you. And I pray that um, this doesn't become something you struggle with for the rest of your life. I pray that you experience true deliverance and freedom from food and, and the obsession in your mind. So I'm gonna pray now. God, I just thank you for each and every person who watched this video series. Lord, I pray that you would bring them deliverance. God, I pray that everyone would surrender control to you, Lord, that they would surrender their body to you. They would surrender their desires to you. God, purify their hearts. That's what they really need. It's not about the food. It's about their hearts. Purify their desires and their appetites, Jesus. I pray that you would do a transformative work in, in women and in men who struggle with food and food addiction and overeating and body image issues, God. I pray that the people would find their identity in you, Lord. They would find their identity in you, God, and they would rest in that, Jesus. I pray that everyone would taste and see that the Lord is good, and they would be blessed by taking refuge in you, Jesus. You are a mighty refuge and a mighty um, tower. You are a strong tower that the righteous can run into, God. So I pray that people would take refuge in you, and you would become their reward, Jesus, and you would fully satisfied like you always do. So I just love you, God. We thank you, Lord, and we pray that, um, or I pray that everyone would be blessed today. In your name, I pray, Jesus. All right. Well, I pray that you, thank you for bearing with me. If you bore with me, I pray that this video series blesses you. I pray um, that God will set you free like I know he will. And as always, I pray you have a blessed and a beautiful day, a day filled with God's beauty. I just want to add, I wrote a blog post about these things last year. I wrote two blog posts um, regarding food. One is called uh, Full and Still Hungry, and the other one is Full and Completely Satisfied. And those are on uh, lifeisbeautiful.com, lifeisbeautiful.com.
B-E-A-U-T-Y-Full.com. If you haven't checked those out, head over there and check those out. I've linked them in the video, all the videos below. Um, so if you wanna read more about my transformation and road to healing with food and struggles with food, those are available resources as well. Again, I pray you all have a blessed and a beautiful day, a day filled with God's beauty.